Hi there, you're listening to Unnatural Selection, the show about newsy type stuff and things. My name is George. My name is Tom. And my name is Adam. And with our powers combined, we are Unnatural Selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Sorry, Adam, Adam was just pulling some weird faces when we were just, uh, I don't know, doing doing the go live. It threw me off. I'm sorry if I sounded a bit weird <laughs> announcing my own name. I was just like, what, Adam, what are you? Okay. Just here to fuck shit up, Tom. Not really. Not really here to play games. Let's just, yeah. just get messy straight up. All right. Um, <laughs> quiet week. <laughs> yeah, quiet week. Uh, so nothing really happened this week. And that's the end of the show. You've been oh, listening cool. to Unnatural Selection. Almost um, seems like a waste to have gotten on the live stream, considering I know. nothing at all happened. So You booted it up. And, yeah, uh, booted it up on Bertha. Been... Got mm. the fans running. Got, you know, got all the screens going. Live stream. Your computer's name. Have you actually named your computer Bertha? I have. Nice. How did how like, does Bertha feel about being that after, being called Bertha? Right, is this after Big Bertha, like the bomb? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> but okay, cool. No, I, I thought maybe there'd be more that you'd have to say about that, but no. All right, my my question was answered. I don't know what I expected. I asked a yes or no question, and I got a yes or a no. And uh, let's move on. We got a problem, Tom? No, no, no problem at all. No, I was just curious. <laughs> Uh, anyway, no, uh, a lot has happened this week, or more, uh, well, y- one major thing has been consistently happening for the past two years, and it's led to a lot of other little things happening as a result of it, because nothing happens in a vacuum. Uh, we are, of course, referring to the fact that we are it. letting it rip. I thought no, we were talking about oh, the sorry. ashes, because yeah, the, the ashes just take a long yeah. time. Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, is that still going? I thought we won. Oh, well, we have won, but you've, you've got to play the rest of the season, Tom. The rest of the series, sorry, because, uh, you know, money. Um, well, yeah, but is what? I thought that would be at another part. Okay, no, I don't no. understand cricket. So, I've had so it we basically, we allow them, to, there's five games, we've won three. Yeah. They're probably going to draw this one, and then who knows what will happen with the next one. But, uh, you know, you've got to play all five because yeah, because the, the ticket holders, Tom, the fans. Right. But even though we've already won. Yeah. So why would anyone try in the last two games? Uh, money, again? Because I mean, they, money get be the they get paid I mean, millions of dollars. They get paid probably millions of dollars. But, but you wouldn't play your best cricket. No, no, You'd actually. probably it's been... just kind of just limp wrist, throw the ball down the pitch. and just underarm it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like an extended drinks break. Yeah. You know, There's also maybe... like 20,000 people at the game each day as well, which what? in Sydney at the moment is Why? blowing my mind. Oh, yeah, yeah. So again, <laughs> and this connects into the one big major thing. We Good are segue. letting it rip, it yeah, seems. Yeah, yeah. All those people for the past two years who have been desperately wanting this, like, just, just let it rip. Just let it rip. Lockdowns don't work. Just let it rip. Well, this is what it looks like uh, with tens of thousands of cases a day in multiple states uh, here in Australia, everyone and their dog is catching coronavirus and it's... Um, you can get some, you yeah. can get some, you get some too. Yes, I don't know about you guys, but it really seems like, a sp- like even though, yes, case numbers have been going up and up and up, like as we've talked about a lot on the show, but just this past seven days alone, I feel like it's just been a constant deluge of like, huh, such and such has COVID. Like just people that we know. Oh. It's just going left, right and centre. So... Exactly what we were doing all the lockdowns to try and prevent is happening. I'd like just to just a round of applause uh, to everyone in Australia. Uh, we have flattened the curve and we have flattened it vertically. Um, <laughs> yep. We have a we, we flattened a new curve. Mm. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Curve. It's like we 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 hit a new goal, and now we're just getting consistent fifty k's. <laughs> we day. have a higher increase, I think, or in terms of the rate of increase. Yeah, this is what I heard the other day, and it might might have changed in the last day or two. But the other day, I heard that we have a higher rate of increase than the US does. Oh, great! At the moment, like we've we've yeah, it's it's completely bonkers. Yeah, it's gone bonkers, and it's just that like it, it boggles my mind because after all these like the all these two years of uh, people like lamenting lockdowns and saying oh they don't work and blah 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 blah, blah, blah. it's like well no this is exact proof that they did work because mm. we're now just giving up 
in terms of trying to reduce the case numbers, but still having like semi lockdowny kind of rules, right? Like you, you, the expect the, the the policy, if you could even fucking call it that, uh, seems to be that you've tested positive or you've gotten tested. Essentially, live in lockdown rules, self imposed. <laughs> For X amount of time or until you get your result and all that sort of stuff while everyone else just pretends like everything's normal Mm. and it's now just running rampant and with all this discussion of oh maybe maybe this variant is less severe it's like well to to maybe healthy full vaccinated people perhaps but the vulnerable or like the immunocompromised and all the people that we were concerned about and all the lockdowns it's still bad <laughs> like this isn't just a oh i'll get it and then i'll be fine like oh yeah well yeah i've Worse had my turn i've had my chicken pox yeah and it's, i'll just yeah nah. it's it, it while it's milder than delta it's still coronavirus it'll still fucking yeah. kill you if you don't look after yourself yep. yeah yeah uh, i saw a um, people like yeah i saw a very fun yeah. article the other day about a 23 year old greek kid uh bodybuilder and science award uh, award-winning scientist uh who died of it yep so that's a thing that i can be anxious about now yeah like it's just a 23 year old bodybuilder and a war-winning scientist no but like clearly (laughs) this kid's in peak (laughs) physical condition yeah and i am not (laughs) nice so yeah so it's just wild to think that everyone's just going like oh well we'll," because so many people are vaccinated and everything that oh yeah then we can all just catch it you'll be sick for a week and then you'll be fine it's like Mm. you might be but other people might die (laughs) yeah you know the other people that we were concerned about over the last two years still there still have other people still exist yeah still Still there Still, still at higher risk of dying from this disease than you are, and um, uh, yeah. So, yep. Tom, can you bad. do? Can you do me a favor and either back up on your mic or turn the gain down a little bit? You're just clipping a tad. Oh, I am. Yeah, just a smidge. Um. So, yeah. So the the message from the uh, Australian federal government they came out with a statement the other day. I don't know if you guys would like to hear it. Um, mm-hmm. oh. But they just want you to. I'm just reading this here. Um, Mm, Go outside and feel the rain on your face is their COVID guidance. I don't know what that's Mm. about. Um, Okay. Step outside and get real high and then (laughs) scream the top of your lungs, what's going on? (laughs) They're just, it it really, like, (laughs) yeah. the guidance, you know, one of the stories that we've got today is that the, you know, in New South Wales, um, you know, it's, it's caused a bunch of other, like, it seems as though the guidance is changing because, so many people are getting COVID and it's just like breaking the economy. And so they're changing the guidance because of that, not because of like the health implications for people, but it's just like, we need people to keep driving the trucks so people can keep getting, you know, avocado, the shops, because otherwise the whole system fucking falls apart. Right. Like, it's, and this is what well, we were discussing last week, right? We we, yeah. we ranted about this at, at length. I was particularly upset, and that was in relation to the the PCR uh, the, the the close contact definition change, mm. which is exact, which has been changed for exactly that that reason that yeah. George just mentioned. Yeah, um, and changed again in the it? interim. Well, I remember in in this intervening week, there's been at least. Because it used to be, oh, you've you've had like yeah, the close contacts thing still matches of like the four hours, like you know, yes, you mm-hmm. can watch Fellowship of the Ring and you're not a close contact. Um, <laughs> the extended as we talked about last that. week, yeah, even the extended version, and then time for a bit of a quickie after that, and you can still get out of there in time. Um, but where was I going with this? Oh yeah, but like you, you still had to confirm uh, a positive rapid test with a PCR, uh, like you know the, the 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 full shebang test afterwards. They then changed that in the middle of next week, being mm. like, oh no, okay, if you've had a ra- a positive rat, you can, you know, you just assume you've got it and stay home. Register and the the rapid test, and, which is like feels like not, an absolute no brainer, right? Like no brainer, right? Yeah. Well, no brainer on that sense, but on the other side of it as well, it's like, but you're not changing that advice because. I don't know that the like that the rat tests are different to how you expect it or anything. You're like, oh fuck, we didn't properly prepare anything, mm. so we just got to change how this system works. Like you know, the, the the very fact that the testing sites 
either don't have the capacity or they're taking forever to test and all these sorts of things. They're like, oh, shit, we didn't bolster that compatibility, so we just have to go, oh, no, no, just take the rapid tests. Oh, but what about the supply of the rapid tests? Hmm? 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 It's it's literally, and we talked about it last week, Ian, but it's it's the most angry I've been at, particularly the federal government. Mm. Um, I mean, the state governments collectively have a have a problem here as well, where they, I mean, I don't know, like if 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 they know that health is their responsibility, um, like, and what have you been doing for the last two years? Mm. Like, I don't know what, but the federal government, I mean, are the ones that should be showing leadership on this, um. But, well, and yeah, I'm just I'm getting just a notification that Scott Morrison has left the country. <laughs> That's weird. <laughs> it always seems to happen. It's it's just like a complete absence of leadership. I mean, Dr. Norman Swan, who's the ABC's coronavirus expert, who they get him wheel him out, they wheel him out and do a pod, gets get him to do a podcast every every week. But well, and, it, it was so it was a daily show, and then towards the uh, Corona cast, we're talking about. And then yeah. uh, at the end of last year, they were basically like, pandemic's over. Maybe we'll do a weekly show. Who knows? Let us know in the comments. And then they sort of wheeled out Norman Swan a couple of days ago and he was on the ABC and he looked un- unhappy to be there. <laughs> yeah. Just frankly, not thrilled that this was yeah. happening and that this was going to be another year of his life. So basically he, and I've made this point as well before, his point was, well, what are we aiming for here? Like we're, mm. you, you know... And how many casualties are acceptable mm. in a year? So we're saying, yeah, maybe a thousand people die from the flu each year. A thousand people die from other illnesses or whatever. Um, so what's an acceptable number? And yeah. you know, if if the health system, if 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 the, if the if the limit is trying to you know negate hospitalizations, what's actually the limit to that? Mm. Yeah, it's at, just. At, at what, yeah, what's the figure that is acceptable hospitalizations? There is like, a complete yeah. absence of policy. Which mm. and look, if you guys watch disaster movies, this is how they start. This is how the the Earth government collapses and the zombies rise up. Um, We're like, telling you that the comet's all, coming. Always, the comet's going to be here in six months. Um, yeah, all they all start by ignoring the scientists. Yes, yeah, exactly. And just and the other thing is like with these rat tests, they're. The, and this is probably the first article we can talk about, and it is probably old news now. But obviously, the government isn't going to make them free. They had a co- they had a national cabinet meeting, and they've decided to make them free for or not fr- or free for concession card holders, but only with a certain limit and under only under certain circumstances. Yeah, you can only um, have ten in three months, but no more than five of them in a single month. And if your name's Steve, yep. <laughs> you can only have three. Per no month Steves. Enough. I cannot make no, that clear. No, no, sorry, uh, Mr. Speaker. I don't agree with the premise of the question. We've allowed many Steves and only Steves, okay, to have the test. And that's a rule that we're sticking with, Mr. Speaker. For That's the health advice. And so if you want a pack of five, it's between $50 and $60 at the moment. It's easier to get yep. a packet of cigarettes than it is to get a rapid test. <laughs> like, and like you go to a pharmacy, they're sold out. Like there's yep. signs up everywhere, all over my yep. local shopping area. Everyone's sold out. I managed to get some the other day because I happened to walk into the pharmacy to get something else. And they just had them there. And there was a line out the door for them. And I had to line up to buy my other thing. And I thought, well, while I'm here, I may as well get some. Mm. So I got some. But like, I, I don't know. I just, if you're not furious, like as, if you're a listener of the show, you're not absolutely furious about this. Like with both for the state and federal governments collectively mm. across the entire country, if you're not furious about this, like you need to fucking wake up, stop watching the news about Djok- Djokovic or Djokovic, whatever the fuck his name is. Yes. No one gives a fuck about like who gives a fuck about him. The fact is, the health, the lack of health policy in this in this current situation is going to cost lives. People are dying. There were 16 people that died today, I think, in either Victoria or New South Wales. So, and if you have you know, you might think, oh, 10 a day, that's not too bad. If 10 people would die a day in one state, let's say nationally, 10 people die a day for the whole year. Let's just do it. I can't do the maths in my head, George. 3, that's 3,600 people, people that di- have died that probably didn't need to die. And is, is that acceptable? Is that an acceptable casualty number? No, it's fucking not. Well, it, unless, and, unless of, like, 
it's an acceptable Any number. Any death that's avoidable as, is not acceptable. It's an acceptable number to, to these people's mind. It's an acceptable no- number as long as you're not one of the people. As yeah, long as, as you're long one as of the you other people, no you then it's about. fine. Yeah. Go, you know, fuck it. Let's let it rip. Let's let's let it run wild. Novak, yeah. the story you're referring to there is Novak Djokovic, number one tennis player in the world, as also um, uh, um, runner up yeah. for uh, yeah, best yeah, to look alike one. world's call. Let me get the joke out, Tom. <laughs> All right, go ahead. It better be good. I was going to say runner up for the uh, colossal arsehole. Uh, colossal. <laughs> Nailed it. George is done. He's ass- out. Colossal asshole lookalike contest. Say that three times fast. Novak Djokovic um, uh, has, yeah, well, there was an exemption and then there wasn't an, an exemption for him coming into the country. And then the border force says, oh, we're going to fucking get him. And then Karen Andrews. Gets on the TV and goes, oh, yeah, fucking, <laughs> you know, I don't know. He's got to comply with the border force just like everyone else. And Tennis Australia is looking around going, I don't know. I think we said something to him. I don't know. They're just like sitting around shitting their Dax like a four-year-old in the park. And and, and the whole story and, and the whole national media attention circus is going on about whether this, you know, one tennis player is allowed into the fucking country while everything burns, while Rome burns in the background, Nero's playing his fiddle. And I just can't help but think, it might be a deliberate tactic to distract us from the thing in the background that's on fire. Thoughts and feelings. What's really interesting is that Tennis Australia and the Victorian government both checked the status of the tennis player. There's two tennis players now. One tennis player was like granted by the fact that she was let in. She was here for a week and then they turned around and cancelled her visa. But the point being is two other you know, bodies said it was okay. And then the federal government sort of, because it was, it was news, I think, la- early last week that- um, They saw that it was a hot Djokovic story and they could divert attention. At this case, it's like, say I he mean, is Omicron positive and unvaccinated. It's one more prick in a, se- in a sea of heaving COVID. Like at this stage, it doesn't fucking matter, does it? Like it's one fucking bloke. He's, uh, he's a shithead and he's unvaccinated. And I think he's a complete fuckwit. But, like, it seems like a very obvious, like, overt, obvious distraction from what's going on, no? Well, yeah. I, I think I feel like it just feels really, it's a really weirdly, weirdly timed that um, mm. he would get here and then all of a sudden some mysterious Border Force people have gone, oh, actually, we need to tighten the rules on this. It's either some, a minister has interfered or someone at the department's gone, Oh fuck! I forgot to. <laughs> Where's that post-it note that I put around here somewhere? <laughs> it's just it's always from Steve's my understanding fault. was the the main the 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 issue was that like the exemption that was granted for him that was that was granted by Tennis Australia and their process to let him play. It has nothing to do with his visa. Mm. No, like and... they were allowed to say you can play in the Australian Open without being vaccinated. Great, granted but that has absolutely no bearing as to whether or not you're allowed in the country. And that was my understanding was the issue because I remember the, the reason it was news sort of initially was Djokovic. Yeah. Uh, you know, there was discussion around like, Oh, will he be able to come and play because he's famously not keen on vaccines and uh, hosted his own douchebag super spreader party in 2020. If we all remember. Mm. Um, yeah. But then he posted something on Instagram being like, Hey, I've been granted an exemption and I'm coming to Australia. So I don't know if he just took the Tennis Australia things to be like, well, I'm allowed in. My visa's been approved. And then they stop you at the airport because, no, your visa hasn't been approved. Oi. And then they cart him off to uh, uh, immigration detention hotel no, in Carlton. I, I think it was literally just a case of, like, no one thought anything of it. He applied for an exemption. Whoever got it just approved it and no one thought anything of it. Um, but then the federal government thought, ah, here's a story. Here's something that we can latch onto and make a bunch of public statements about, and that'll divert attention away from things literally fucking falling apart. The fact that there are COVID positive nurses working in New South Wales hospitals dealing with non COVID patients is a sign of the end times. <laughs> like, it, it is. Like the whole the whole point of going to a hospital is that you're there to get healthcare and be healthy. If someone there at the hospital is giving you a life threatening illness, it ceases to be the thing that it is, which is a hospital where you go to get well. Like, so, we might circle back to that, Tom. You had a point though about the um, uh, 
Djokovic and the the backfiring of the oh well yeah it, it it will take us into another topic of discussion. So if you've got anything mate more that's maybe more COVID related, I'd, I'd get it out now well, before I go into that ramble. Um. Well, yeah, the, the story that George is talking about is in New South Wales. So that's to do with the New South Wales healthcare system and, and how well it's coping. Now, Dominic Perrette or Perrettet or Perotet, I don't know how the fuck I pronounce his name, um, who I'm famously was handballed the uh, Golden Goose by uh, one Gladys Berejiklian um, and, and her former party, uh, he has repetitively said that the health system in New South Wales is fine. It's the best in Australia and it's all good. Um, there are reports now, as George alluded to, coming out that uh, things are not good. Um, and it also goes towards the point that I made last week as well about you know having one nurse looking after potentially triple the amount of patients they're meant to be looking after. And Elective surgeries to- have been cancelled. I heard yeah. a story that in Victoria... The other day, I don't know if this is still the case, that um, uh, you, you can't get ambulances at certain hours because there's just no ambulances to be had. Like, it, you know, if you've, if you've yeah. got some sort of elective, I don't know, cancer treatment or something, yeah, that's got to wait. And if you, I don't know, if you break your ankle, fucking hobble into an Uber, mate. <laughs> like, good luck to you. I would find your way to a hospital, I guess. Maybe. It's, it's a joke. So yeah, so, like, yeah. And that's Victoria that... The, some of the things that they've put in place, they've in Victoria they've re place density limits, and I think New South Wales has now as well. But I mean, the goose is yeah, already cooked. Yeah, yeah, chicken's already cooked at this point. Like, yeah, we're back in the footloose timeline because they're banning dancing as well. <laughs> like, that's not gonna. It's, it's a band aid on a fucking gaping gunshot wound. Um, absolutely with... gaping. <laughs> yeah, um, it's the real gaper. But yeah, basically, that the, the story that that's kind of shocking is that there are a number of nurses you know, sort of on social media and that The Guardian has reported as well mm. that have basically been, you know, they've been working on wards with COVID positive nurses. Now, the advice is basically that in certain hospitals, if you are positive but you're asymptomatic and you're feeling well enough, then you can come in as long as you're masked up and don't take your mask off and all this kind of stuff. But, yeah, I mean, the fact that you would potentially expose patients who are healthy to, uh, well, well, you know, well, healthy in sense they don't have COVID, yeah, healthy Dude. in that sense, but also potentially, like, you know, might not be in the best position if they catch COVID. It'd be worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Um, yeah, the, the um, Guardian article says, um, some claim they saw COVID-positive nurses on wards with obvious symptoms, including coughing and sneezing. Yeah. And that's yeah. the thing, is that, like, you can say, oh, this is what you're meant to do, but what people actually do, um, if they're trying to, you know, get a crust of bread or if they're feeling obligated to come in, if they're being pressured to come in, um, is a completely different story. Um, and it's, it, this will start to happen potentially all over Australia, maybe excluding Western Australia, and I'm not sure how the Northern Territory is doing, but certainly in Tasmania, South Australia, New South Wales, Canberra, Victoria, Tasmania, that, the, those, the, the other states and territories, it's getting pretty, pretty out of hand. Um, yeah. We've got you know, 15, 60,000 cases a day in each state. And this is where uh, what I was talking about before of like it's almost like we're living we're living under lockdown esque situations, but just also pretending that we're not in mm. like yeah everything's open and we're all and it's all just being let it rip. But if you are exposed or like yeah if you either are positive or you're a close contact or under whatever fucking definition they're going with on any given Tuesday, like any of that sort of stuff that you are then supposed to not go into work and isolate and all that sort of stuff mm. because we're not in lockdown technically the support networks aren't there mm. which is where you're getting oh so uh, nurses as an example if it's like oh and probably they would be uh, in a big position to be exposed working in a hospital or like mm. anywhere near an icu or anything like that that yeah if it's like oh you're a close contact well then you need to go home and not work for seven days because you know that would be best for both your colleagues and the patients and all that sort of mm. stuff, but there's no support systems in place, and yeah. it, it's it, yeah, there's no, none of the 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 job keeperiness, none of whatever. Like that's what's fucked. Like they've spent two years complaining about oh, everyone saying lockdowns don't work, and, 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 and yeah. like we can argue till the cows come home about like the 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 policies and the implementations of the different supports that came in because of those processes. But I think we can all agree now that hey, the lockdowns do in fact work. 
Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, this is the right. thing. It's like the people can say, oh, yeah, consumer spending's down and, you know, the businesses aren't making any money because people are afraid to go out. I was like, this is what yeah. happened. This is what happens when you let it rip. There, it was never an either or. This is what I was saying the whole pandemic. Nobody fucking listen to me. Is that, you know, people were saying, oh, you could, it, it was an either or, a binary, um, so, you know, solution. Either lockdown or economy and it turns out if you have no lockdowns and there's a fucking raging pandemic outside people are scared and they won't want to go out and spend money in the economy like it it is both and like the economy is stooged and we're also getting a bunch of people sick and dead as a result of it And, and it just like i know we talked about this last week but it's like it was like what were the last two years for like i would have expected now, if we had two full years to bend the curve and prepare and get the health system up and running, it'd be a golden fucking palatial. Each hospital would be a palatial estate. There'd be a big Trump golden toilet in every ward. It'd be, you know, state-of-the-art facilities. And that Micklem quarantine facility that they um, that they were arguing about with the federal government is still being built. It's like, it's still just a work in progress. Like, yeah. It's it, 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 this, you know, we've, we've had two full calendar years to prepare for this and get the, you know, build up the facilities, hire extra nurses, I don't know, get people out of retirement for this. And then it's just like, we've had the worst of both worlds. A war. There's no economic If this was support. a war, we'd be, we'd all, we'd lose. We'd, like, we'd be, we'd all be, yeah, we'd be dead. The, the whole place would be crawling in Nazis yeah. if this is, if this is the second like, world war, because we would have absolutely fumbled the ball. You know, at least with lockdowns, there was economic support, right? There was yeah. JobKeeper, there was JobSeeker, there was, you know, people are now, all the moratoriums are lifted, so you, you can kick people out if they're not paying their rent. But, like, if there's no business, mm. because everyone's freaking out about the pandemic and no one wants to go and stay, you know, at a hotel, no one wants to go and spend money at businesses, they're still not going to be able to pay their rent, and there's no economic support now. Now there's the government saying, well, yeah, good luck, mate, you're on your own. See you later. <laughs> and... um yeah, uh, I just—it's it's cooked. Like it's—it's it's absolutely cooked. Like, I don't yeah, know. I—I uh, I have this faith that, like, like yes, things are bad, but there's competent people working behind the scenes to to improve this to make it better, and like we will be better on the other side because of this. And it's like no, not not only was that not happening, but now it's just like we're just we're just over it i guess and so we're just flinging the doors open and we're just letting it rip like the plan is to let it rip through as many people as possible like i don't see, like what's as you said adam what's the policy here there like what's no policy. the plan to, to lack there is a void of government policy at the moment new south wales apparently uh, health i think or some public hospitals are thinking about flying in overseas temp staff to try and help plug the gap um you know, there's a story here from the ABC about a nurse in New South Wales who, and this is the other aspect as well, like it's not just physically people on leave, it's the people that are remaining there who are then mentally cooked and physically cooked because they're worked to the bone trying yeah. to cover the gap. Um, yeah. Like, you know, we, we, we rage all the time about various government policies and everything else and like a lot of that sort of part of the culture wars where it's, you know, left versus right, that's sort of how you look upon the world. This though is not so much about that this is like a literal we don't even have a decision we just have an absence of government policy there is an absence of leadership in any way shape or form even from you know like like from the victorian government you know you've got the premier and the the deputy premier both on leave or something and you've got someone else you know the yeah, third the, the third premier. one down is is now the acting premier at the moment like there is there is no policy um or stated objective on what we're trying to achieve and I don't know, like a lot of people our age are still going out and trying to sort of enjoy themselves. But like, you know, there's a there's a point where, you know, the supermarkets are now starting to run out of stock. You know, I went to a pharmacy the other day. As there's I said, no, no truck drivers. No, all the parts of the no supply truck chain are bra- breaking down. It's not that people are freaking out and buying toilet paper because they're worried they might shit themselves to death. No. That's not happening. It's that there's no, like, all of the people involved in the very lengthy chain that gets things from farm to table that that's all being interrupted and deliveries are late. And if it's late to this guy, it's going to be late to the next guy. It's going to be late to the warehouse. It's going to be late to the distribution mm. center. It's going to be late to the, you know, like it, it's just it's not. What ha- it's what happens in a war where, where you have, yeah. you know, um, 
casualties and, and issues where, you know, if you don't have people and machines and other things to, to, to plug the gaps where they need to go, then things start to break down. Um, and again, like this is, this is how those, like this is to be a bit dramatic about it, but this is how those disaster movies start. Mm. This is how, you know, society breaks down because there is no redundancy in the system. Yeah, and like you can have your own little, you can have your veggie patch out the back, which grows uh, three three cherry tomatoes a season, but that's not going to help you. Like, uh, there's this famous trucker saying that like the world is seventy two hours away from apocalypse at any given time. Because if the truckers stop, you know, if the petrol stops, the truck stops, nothing gets delivered to supermarkets. Like everything. That's starts what happened to in the, the UK two months ago. Is in the UK didn't have enough truck drivers. Yeah. They had to get army truck drivers in to start driving all the. The trucks. Yeah, I'm not sure how their supply chain ended up in the end. But oh, yeah, the the UK kicked out all the immigrants and then realised, oh shit, we need immigrants to <laughs> drive out trucks. It's yeah, it's an absolute clusterfuck. And like you know, there there are some people saying, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't panic and it's fine. Like you know, most people are are well enough. But I don't know. It's it'll if it, again, you know, what what's an acceptable casualty rate? Like we, no one's put a figure on that. Because no you one know, wants to got... own it. Who wants to own? I think a point five percent death rate is acceptable. Or and, and <clears throat> it's not just that. It's it's also that we we don't even have good data now because we've just given up on our testing regime. We don't even have the right information with which to make those decisions. Because it's like Norman Swan reckons okay with a positivity rate of whatever it is nine to twelve percent, uh, and people doing rats and some of those aren't being registered. Like you know, he he reckons it could be as high as one to two million cases a week. Uh, of Omicron that we're currently actually going through based on, you know, what you can infer from the the testing data. So it's like, it's not as though, it, it's not just like an absence of leadership, an absence of policy. It's actually like an absence of the tools with which to make decisions as well, because we've just kind of like yeeted out of the, <laughs> like our leaders yeah. have just they've, they've literally, done that like, like Meryl Streep at the end of Don't Look Up, they've just gone, oh shit, we fucked up. And they've hopped onto the, you know, the, the spaceship to a new planet. They've just gone, oh fuck this, see you guys later. Good luck. Coming up for the federal government, I would say in the next, what, three or four months. And you've got a probably Victorian one coming up as well this year. So I'm not sure when New South Wales next election is. I would assume that's somewhere in probably the next year I don't or think so. It's but, next year. Yeah. Um, no idea. You know, like... What what you decide at the ballot box, you know, in these next elections will affect, you know, it matters. Mm. And like, you know, if, if you want to see how your vote replicates into government policy, you know, you can you can see that with you, with, with the way you know this whole fucking um, concept of neoliberalism and this concept of personal responsibility and all this this shit that these slogans that keep coming out from an irresponsible you know statements that keep coming out from from um people in power Mm. all of that you know is an effect of the way you vote if you vote people in that are inept like if there is a crisis those people may not step up to the plate and we saw that in the u.s with donald trump you know, like, we, we, you, it, sometimes you can get away with having a shit person in power for three for three years. You know, you can have Tony Abbott in and you can sort of get away with it. But if you've got people in power that at some point, you know, whether it be a year in, two years in, they decide, eh, fuck it, mm. they burn out or, or can't be stuffed or the, the, the collective lack of, planning and 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 resources if that builds up and then breaks the effect of government policy then you know this is where we end up and it's just kind of like you begged us for these jobs could you at least pretend to do them like you begged us you spent all this money pork barreling and doing all this dumb shit to get to to you know plead for the for people to vote you into these jobs and now that they're there they're just kind of like eh <laughs> Yeah, like, cool, no, we're here now. And it's not as though, like, for me as a voter, I don't feel as though I'm really getting satisfaction from from any any part of the political spectrum. I really don't feel as though there's anyone out there that's speaking to my concerns that really gives a shit about me and my interests. It's a lot of, like, over here on the right, 
you've got the LMP who is just like mustache twirling, snidely whiplash, just like pure evil. Just like actually like the people in Don't Look Up that are just like, I want to destroy the planet for profit. Like, just like, just Satan. You've got Satan over here. And then over on the left, you've got like Anthony Albanese, who just kind of makes me go, Ugh. like... <laughs> It was like, yeah, the amount of times I see Albanese like saying, like, like yeah, like uh, saying the sorts of things where I'm like, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. But are you actually is that going to be a policy? Yeah, like right. you know, saying things like the, all the rapid tests should be free for all. I'm like, cool. Are you campaigning are you do on that, that? or <laughs> and if you uh, the prime minister yeah. like if the next election Labor gets in, you're going to make all those sorts of things free for everybody because the, the access to those tests will probably still be a problem. I just don't, there's no, there's no, um, I I, like, I hate to be the guy that like comments on a leader's charisma or lack of charisma, but like, there's no, there's no there, there. Like I I used to think it was like a good strategy, like electorally to just do like the hardcore norm core fucking just like, I'm going to say sane shit on Twitter and like people will realize I'm the best. I was like, yeah, that's right. We should have rapid tests for people and like okay but it's like there, there there seems like a lack of fervor here which is like actually deeply concerning like it literally i like i don't think i'm exaggerating when i when i use that nero fiddling as rome burns analogy like that is what it feels like there is a sense of massive urgency right now to fucking get some shit together and if you can't be a little bit more vociferous in your criticism of w- literal satan <laughs> like i don't know that you deserve to win if that's the case. If you can now, if you can't now of all times find something to really criticize the government on, then what the fuck are you doing there? And then, like, between them and the the Greens, I'm like, okay, well, it's, the Greens are a little bit too. <laughs> like, you know, like I've seen your policy proposals, and like as a student of history and things, like that doesn't make any sense, but like, love you for trying, you know, points for turning up and having authority in believing in what you talk about, even if it is mostly nonsense, <laughs> but like, I feel like there's an authenticity well, there. Not, not, not every Greens candidate is like that. I don't know no, it's not mostly nonsense, but no, the point taken. But like, not practicable, but I believe that there is sincerity there. There is authenticity there that I do not feel from Labour. Um, yes. And, but yes, I politically... I pro- I'm I'm between I'm further left than Labour, but I'm further right than the Greens, and so right now I don't feel as though I, as a voter, have a real political constituency, and which is probably why you're well, seeing these voters. Have you heard about the Palmer United Party? Oh sorry. my God! I've been seeing so many ads for the Palmer United Party. Every time I see it, I want to punch yeah. my screen. Yeah, I love the yeah the the Palmer the the United Party United Australia Party ad that I see all the time that just makes me laugh to myself is where it like presents as this post apocalyptic dystopian future of oh you know if the Liberal Labor and the Greens get back into to Parliament in Canberra they'll keep working together I'm like you say <laughs> it's a bad thing that the government works together look to at these bipartisan <laughs> assholes you know <laughs> holding hands and singing Kumbaya. Oh, what a hellscape! You know, like what a hellscape that the liberals and greens work together. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What? A snow, mean, snowball's chance in hell of that. Yeah. The um the point uh, being though is that they're actually they're campaigning for people like you, George, who probably haven't got the nows to work out that the Palmy United Party is probably even worse. Just full like of a, actual like medical grade morons. And like the, back in the, the 1900s, they would have yeah. been confined because they're actual like medical idiots. Well, yeah, and that they don't really want to get into power. They're more just like you know, it's it's uh, you know Clive Palmer's shtick of like, no, I don't want to actually be in Parliament, but I'll use it to guarantee that the Libs win. <laughs> it's right, yeah, and, and it's then probably he gets his capitalist utopia. It's probably why you're seeing so much movement in the voices of movements in the in in these various like inner city liberal seats because it's like a really clear focus, uh, probably like wealthy upper middle class area they would ordinarily vote liberal but they're actually concerned about climate change and their local member like whilst he might talk a, a good game about it actually votes exactly with the coalition 100 percent of the time against anything that would do anything about climate change um and so they think okay well maybe i'll vote for zali steagall or helen haynes or you know one of these other independents because at least i feel as though they'll do something about one thing that i actually care about which is climate change like it's it's 
the the disenchantment is turning a lot of people into single issue voters. I feel like. Mm. I, look, I don't know. I mean, I I found with independents, like apart from some of the psychopaths that are former Liberal Party or Palm United Party that end up being independents because they get kicked out of the party, the ones right, that because actually they're campaign. too radical to be part of the party. Yeah. It's just Corey Bernardi's just like, <laughs> I'm just going to go and do it. Like, it's too much common sense for the centre-right. It's way too much common sense. Like, you look at, you know, like Jackie Lambie is a good example. I mean, she, well, probably not a great example because she started as the Palm United Party, but she's someone who I guess mm. who has grown into the role a little bit, but that does campaign... And does seem to come on the side of issues where where there is a, a moral obligation to do something. I remember there but was you have a other story. people like Andrew Andrew Wilkie, for instance, in Hobart has yeah. been he just keeps getting reelected because mm. they love him down there because he he just he just makes sense and the shit he's talking about. Imagine that a local member that serves his community uh, and that you know acts in their interests and so they vote for him. What a what a crazy idea! I remember there was a story with I think it was Craig Kelly when he jumped out of the um, uh, Liberal Party. And he was asking Jackie Lambie um, who tells him how to vote on stuff. He goes, where's the vote card that tells you how to vote on things? And she goes, Did the, you don't, you're an independent now. You, there's no vote. What the, what, what the fuck are you talking? Are you, are you an actual moron? That's not a real story. That's real. I heard that. I was just like, how is that possible that you don't, because they don't read the legislation. None of these pricks actually do any work. Right? <laughs> they don't do any work. They have a staff yeah. who's a bunch of morons that they've handpicked to execute their moron will in the world. And they go and read the legislation. You know, they don't even read it, really. They get a card from the party that says, here's how you're voting on this issue. In the Labor Party, it's like, if you don't vote this way on this issue, you get kicked out of the party. At least in the Liberal Party, they allow a certain background level of fucking insanity and, and you know, conscious voting and, and that sort of stuff. But like there's that there, you are literally informed. This is how you vote. And that's hey, how you it mean works. The other way around. I, I can't imagine the labor party would be the ones who are like, get the absolute. No, la- labor party is actually famous oh, yeah. for it. They don't have those like sort of oh, wow. um, those, uh, those um, provisions Rebel in MPs. there for, for conscious, conscious votes and things like that. If you don't vote with the party, like you're you're nicked basically, and something that the LMB talks about quite a while is like a selling point. Like we're a broad tent, you know. You can you can vote the way you choose, but like we all happen to vote together. <laughs> yeah. Except when it comes to yeah, gay marriage, can, then can, then yeah, there's yeah. time for a conscience vote. But yeah, you can vote <laughs> how you else. choose, but then Frydenberg will have a stern conversation with you at the side of Parliament when you do. Yeah, hopefully, yeah, basically, hopefully he's uh, masked yeah. up um, because he's uh, come come down with COVID. I heard. Hmm. Um, no comment. Um, yes. All right. Well, now, I don't know. Do we want to loop back, Adam, to what we were highlighting before when we were talking about Djokovic? Yes. Yeah, uh, yes. Djokovic. Sorry. Oh, yeah. To kind of like, we'll pivot off more of the COVID talk and the legislation sort of stuff now. But, yeah. So, uh, as, as we were saying before, that, yeah, is the whole Djokovic situation of, like, pulling him in, put, throwing him into immigration detention in Carlton and all that just as a, a ploy to... Det- to you know, distract everybody from the colossal ineptitude of the federal government. Perhaps, but it's really backfired on them mm. because it has further brought to light for for a lot of people uh, Australia's track record on detaining people trying to come into the country mm. because Djokovic has been, you know, uh, and other tennis players, I think, as well, uh, anyone who's sort of been, co- like, also placed in there due to visa woes, um, have been complaining about the conditions inside this uh, hotel where they detain people. Uh, and it's, uh, you know, brought back to light people who've been in there for nigh on 10 years because they came here seeking asylum. Yeah, there's asylum seekers in this place. And what's You mean the, the millionaire doesn't, doesn't like the, uh, the three-star hotel he's been put up in? Even if that, like, just doesn't like the uh, the hellscape that we have thrown uh, people who've dared to try and come into the country on asylum seeking grounds. Um, He's accidentally and- making a very a very progressive commentary. He goes, "We should not be treating people like this," and we're like, "Yeah, yeah. I know we shouldn't be treating people. That's yeah, what we've we been saying. That's my point, Novak." And and so protests of people like going to outside this hotel, I think that initially started as like 
for some reason, free Djokovic. I didn't realize. The Serbians are like... very pissed off about it. There's oh, like oh, a yeah, lot of. Would... Sorry, when are Serbians not pissed off about something? Okay, there's a couple <laughs> of wars in there I think we could talk about. Oh, yes. But so how this has backfired, though, is it's just drawn to a lot of people's attention that, like, that, that you know, Australia's awful track record on detaining asylum seekers isn't purely reserved to offshore. There's a place in Carlton where people have in here in Melbourne that have just been detained for nearly a decade and that the conditions are fucked. They came here as children. They are now adults. All this sort of stuff has been further thrown back into the news. Even to the point where some of the people who were going there to, like, uh, I've seen, like, you know, Vox Pops and things like that, of people who were going there to protest free Djokovic learned, wait, we've locked people in this place for 10 years? That's kind of messed up. Mm. That's fucked. And now they're on, like, let them out. They're on that train. So it's renewing those sorts of things. <laughs> I was just here for a protest. I was just here for a protest. Yeah. And it's kind of just backfired on them in that, like, now people are talking about this again. I'm hearing and, about this um, climate change stuff. Not not impressed. I think it's been right. We should, like, this just, yeah. it, it is a wonder. I remember seeing this video during the Black Lives Matter protest. Um which uh, there was there was a woman who was talking about, you know, the history of, you know, black people and policing in America, and you know, mentioned you know the uh, Tulsa race riots, and you know they dropped bombs on us, they did all this, you know, redlining, like basically giving a like Remember that clip, that brief, brief history of like here's all the fucked up shit that African Americans have had to endure yeah, here in America, yeah. like and, fuck your hall of fame and fuck your target, like. Yeah, that and, woman. Yeah, and and, it, and it ended with something like, you're lucky that all black people want is equality. They're not looking to get even. Because yeah, like yeah, they want equality, not revenge. Yeah, you're lucky that that's <laughs> all they yeah. want. Um, yeah. And that was like quite chilling. And I, I do think that like, it sort of reminds me of that because I do think there will come a time where, you know, not to sound all seizing the means of production but like I do think there will be a time where a bunch of underprivileged um, you know, people that have been stepped on in this society, whether it comes to climate or refugees or minorities or the disabled, like there's so many people that I feel like are just going to one day wake up and maybe the pandemic has really sort of lit a fire under all of this. And they go, hey, we're getting really badly fucked. Like that, that we have to do like an actual like revolution could happen like these are the contexts that grow revolutions historically is you have some sort of you know massive disruptive historical event and the second and third order consequences of that are the things that wake people up and start revolutions and start social unrest and and all that sort of stuff like the inequality that we currently experience i remember already there is it's like i remember someone saying uh something to the effect of like it's the the inequality that we have now is 17, I think it was my sister who was telling me this, 17 times worse than the French Revolution when that happened. The, in, the financial inequality that we have now is 17 times worse than it was when they started chopping off heads with a fucking guillotine. So, like, <laughs> there, there does come some sort of breaking point. And I think it might be when, you know, monetary policy shifts and interest rates go up and no one can afford to live in a fucking house anymore and we're all on bread lines and everyone's freaking out. And we go, actually, this is all fucked. All of this is cooked. We got sold a bill of goods. Like, what the fuck? Yeah. Start sharpening the guillotines. That's what it feels like now. It feels like, it really feels like, not to be too melodramatic, I'm sorry, Rome, Rome is burning and sharpening the guillotines, but that is the kind of vibe and energy that I'm seeing like out there in the world from some people not not from everyone obviously some people are happy to go to test cricket matches but while while the world burns and that's where i feel like you can see all those random kind of whack sentiments um where like uh back on like the immigration detention and things like that um was uh my my partner was showing me some responses she was getting on twitter just from random nut bars when she dared tweet something about like the people who've been kept there for nearly a decade yeah and people saying things like uh oh well all right let them into your home and take care of them the rest of their lives then i'm like well one oh yeah if i had if i had the means and the space totally Okay, like yeah, let's do the general let's do the generous thing and help people. Like, yeah, let's do the generous thing and help people. But two, we're already doing that with our taxes. Mm. What do you think pays for the forever prison? 
yeah. our taxes. <laughs> so yeah. you're already supporting these people. And plus, you let them out, they're adults. They could get a job. They could work in a Bunnings and support mm. themselves and just be a regular person in our economy. Like everyone else. Yeah. What are you so afraid of? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> like, Brown just, people is the short answer to that. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, and yeah, and they said some other kind of like what I imagine is very thinly veiled racist bullshit of like country shopping, quote unquote, and things like that. I'm like, what do you mean? I'll be good. I, like, that doesn't seem like a thing. Yes. He's been uh, yeah, locked up for 10 years, but he's been uh, yeah searching online on Wish.com for new countries. Been window shopping for a long It's uh, that. This Ozpost <laughs> is really taking a long time to come through nowadays. Yeah, it's yeah. really, yeah. it just says your package is in, you know, it's at the depot and it's just been buffering there for nine and a half <laughs> years. Yeah. It's just like, what? You think they're country, the country shopping looking for like, oh, what country is the least likely to like kill me or give me an awful, awful life? How dare they? I want the country that locks me up for 10 years in a forever, in a forever mm. prison uh, with Novak Djokovic. Who's unvaccinated, yep. allegedly. Yeah, so. yeah, great. Oh, That's, yeah, sounds wonderful. Sounds good. But yeah, sign me up. Uh, I think uh, fantastic that it's, I guess, renewed sort of stuff. I mean, I learned a lot. Like, I knew there was onshore detention as well as our offshore torture camps, mm. but I, I didn't realize there was a hotel in Carlton that has just yeah. been holding people for nearly a decade. There's, there's, there's other like, ones yeah, around as well. There's me, one, so there's one when it out comes west. to setting up your, your gulags, Tom, it's like yeah. the real estate saying says, it's all about location, location, location. You, location, want, something, location, but, you want something that's yeah. close to the city, you know, harbour views. Uh, you really can't get any uh, a yeah. better location for a gulag than Carlton. You know, it's really, it's at the top of the east, eastern freeway, um, convenient links to transport, uh, into the city not that you'll use it because you'll be in prison but uh it's uh you know you yes. can't you can't beat that view yeah so just fuck so there's another way that if this is a distraction from their coronavirus ineptitude i learned another fact about our awful history in uh in relation with asylum seekers so well, they're, they're good so, on you scotty if that was a ploy i have so, another reason to hate you more they're so <laughs> inept that even their distraction was done poorly right. yeah <laughs> Like, even their distraction is not going well for them, yes. at least in terms of, like, lowering dissent. <laughs> um, yeah, but who knows what the fuck's going to happen with Djokovic. I just can't imagine, just in a, a completely unimportant sidebar, I just couldn't imagine, like, if, if his visa, if, if he wins his appeal or whatever, and it's like, all right, no, nah, you can stay and you can play in the open. What's that match going to be like? Like, read the room, you fuckwit. Like, you've come in publicly being all like, oh, no, I don't like vaccines and blah, 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 blah. Like, uh, are we just going to boo him off the court? Like, what's going to... It's funny because a lot of people were... It's funny because it's it's sort of gone... The, the cycle and, and the messaging is sort of on the on the interwebs is sort of sort of come full full, full cycle. So there was a whole lot of like, oh, is, is Djokovic coming? Is he coming? And then he was coming and, you know, the morning of him arriving, um, or so, you know, the, the, when he announced that he was coming, everyone was outraged because, you know, I haven't been able to see my family and friends for X amount of years mm, and yeah. God knows Just what else. Because he's a rich athlete. Because he's, he's a rich athlete. athlete. How come yeah. he gets to have it? This is privilege. And then he got blocked and everyone was like, ha, 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 ha. Then he got sent to the hotel and everyone's like, oh, that's pretty mean. No, he shouldn't be in the hotel. We should let him. He's just, he's just one man in the, as George said, in, in the sea of COVID. So who cares about him? And oh, now we should be, yeah, like, yeah, we should let everyone out of the hotel, you know. Um, and then, yeah, so let's assume that he does get, he does win his appeal and he's allowed on court. Do we then go back to hating him again? I'm, I'm a little bit confused about I'm what. I'm fine to continue. Hate. Can we take just a quick vote? I'm fine hating him, Tom. Oh yeah, yeah. I, yeah. I, I was going to say I haven't stopped hating him in this whole process. I don't know. I hate him. To be clear, yeah. I I just don't care. I don't understand why this is something that we're discussing. Parliament House was set on fire. Old Parliament House was set on fire like last week. That has barely been in the news. They've caught the guy that did it, um, or one of the guys that did it. Like there yeah. was another anti-lockdown, anti-mask protest thing in the city 
I guess they're not covering that because they're, they're a bunch of nut bars. But like, well, I don't so even know what they're protesting they're about at this point. They don't have to wear masks outside, <laughs> so I don't know what they're protesting about. What are they protesting about, about now? Like, yeah. what what are you angry about? Pandemic You've laws, got what you wanted. Some, I don't know. Right. Angry, I'm just angry at brown people, Adam. I don't know. I'm just angry. I'm just mad. I just want to burn. I just want to do stuff. I just want to march yeah, around with they, my friends. Yeah, what are they fucking protesting? We're living in the let it rip hellscape that you wanted. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we're living yeah. in the Mad Max reality that you wanted for us. Like, you win, Rupert Murdoch. You win, uh, Alan Jones. Like, you guys won. Okay, great. Like, this is it. This is what it looks like. I don't know what you're fucking complaining about at this stage. Like, um, but look, uh, what we should be talking about, though, I think, in the news, I think, I think we're, you know, we're misguided. We're looking at negative news stories all the time. We need to talk about some good news stories. And, uh, you know, one of them is uh, from The Guardian because The Guardian, I don't know, I get some weird shit that posts that gets pops up from The Guardian in my news feed and this is one of them. But uh, It's a broad, did you know, broad tent, The Guardian. It is a broad tent, broad church. Broad church. Um, there are such a thing as poo donors. Yeah. And, and poo um, transplants. And poo, and poo, poo, poo. Transplants. Yeah, you don't need a donor yeah. unless you're going oh, to yeah. give the poo to and transplant to, it to, to someone. transplant that poo. Yeah. Unless, of course, you're just deep. like, uh, oh, this is a deep cut. Apparently, there was a guy. What was it? Is the toilet man? And apparently, he was like a big thing in the gay community where he would like go to places and you could poop on him. I'm pulling. I'm pulling that. Okay, so you keep talking about the story. And okay, I'll, I'll okay. Find I have it. A, no idea what you're talking about, and B, no idea where you're getting this from. <laughs> I'd like to know your source on this. So this um, <laughs> this particular article from The Guardian is talking about the microbiome and, and um, how that's an emerging field for health and how the microbiome basically affects the rest of your health, whether it be from your immune system to you know fighting cancer and all that kind of stuff like that. But one of the things you can do to treat certain problems with your gut and intestinal system is have a poo transplant. And yeah. apparently, good poo donors are so hard to find, they're called unicorns in the industry, as it were. Wow, now, you, don't, you don't want to mix up that terminology with the, uh, I believe, the colloquial uh, sexual partner reference of a unicorn. <laughs> Ah, <laughs> oh, the poo um, jogger. Remember the poo jogger, twenty eight. Ah, the poo jogger. Oh. Yeah. So I do. No, I, I this is all. Bl George seemed to know about this. I, I don't know if you knew about this, Tom, but this like blew my mind. But a, poo, the healthy, a healthy stool it, transfer it blew your mind as well as your colon. It did. Uh, a healthy stool transfer into mm. the gastrointestinal tract of an unhealthy recipient has been proven to treat people with intestinal conditions, including the superbug uh, C diff. It so there's a longer name, but I'm not going to pronounce it. Uh, which can cause diarrhea, sepsis, and even death. And so what they do is they they get the sample of the poo and they get a big syringe and they just sort of just, just squish it, they just squish it in there, and then they just let it, let it let it go. And then you've got yeah, it, it helps reset the microbiome of it, your. Uh, it really is like a child's understanding of how this thing might work. They're like, you've got unhealthy poo. And we need to get some healthy poo and then put it in your poo. <laughs> Be like, oh, I don't think. Are you a doctor? Do you work here for sure? Like, is this? I yeah, don't know. Be in in a moment. It's like, yeah, I don't know, know if this guy even works here. <laughs> he didn't have a lab coat, did he? It's kind of like when they used to let people bleed. It's like yeah, you got to bleed out the. Uh, what the, you need the, is some leeches, illness. my friend. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. No, I'd known about this sort of stuff before. I was like, yeah, because okay. like, you know, some people like you know, there's things like. Yeah, un unhealthy bacteria or like you know like constipation to the point where it like needs like surgical intervention but yeah some of it is that no no your body is incapable of passing what you've got going on so we need to introduce the good things in there and no amount of like correcting your diet will do it mm. quickly enough so we have to put that stuff in now to at least save your life and then you know better diet and exercise and everything can take care of the rest but yeah it's quite amazing it, it's insane and i yeah i just apparently this this particular uh this group of 
scientists, they're looking at doing like pellets. So rather than just literally inserting. Sorry, poo pellets has got to be the most disgusting fucker. And they're like, oh, you can take it orally. And I'm like, why would I? Why would you describe it? Let's just call it a probiotic and just say it's like good bacteria in a pill and just give it, don't tell me what's in it. Don't call it a poo pellet. Poo, the poo pellet. That's what You're going to have real trouble getting that down, even with a big glass of water, yeah. I think. Yeah, you're going to have um, trouble marketing that. So, uh, yeah, I just, uh, this was a whole, just the headline of this article got me, and I, I just thought it was an interesting uh, point of discussion. Uh, mm-hmm. Super poo, the emerging science of stool transplants and designer gut bacteria. But uh, we, we'll put that up in the in our website for, for your viewing pleasure. But uh, would you guys get a poo transplant if, if you needed it? Oh. I mean, if I had to, yeah. Because, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, uh, is, the, is the other option death? The I other mean, option is death, to be yeah, fair. Yeah, so, so yeah, I, I mean, mean, yeah, 100%. 100%, yeah. I'd get the poo transplant. Yeah, now, what I've... would be the minimum requirement? Like, what if it wasn't death? What if it was like um, just a bit of discomfort for a week? Oh, well, I mean, no, I think, well, oh, hang on. Like, just a bit of discomfort. Like, what, would I have a sore, like, a sore butt for a week? Because, like, mate, sore I've had sore, a a sore butt for like months. Like, you know, I okay. can cop that sort of stuff. Yeah. No, no, you know, because, like, I don't know. Is it a choice between have like I assume you're unconscious when they do it, so it's like go under a general and then you wake up and it's and it's done and then I, like no, I think I'd still get the thing. Like you still get the thing done. Was, okay. You know, lo- losing feeling in both your legs for the rest of your life. Yeah, I'll get the poo transplant. What? <laughs> like, I'd get it for a mild headache. I really, I have no I threshold yeah, I there. Get, I don't know. I'm gonna fuck. A hard choice. Like, can I get one? Are you, are you allow it? Because I'll get one now. I'll just. Because I feel like it would help in. my. I'll, I'll give you one. I'll, 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 uh, I'll donate. I'll be a unicorn. Uh, hang on. I'll be your unicorn. Hang on, mate. Uh, and this sounds like it's yeah. just a ruse from Adam to give away his poo. Like, oh, don't worry, mate. I'll give you a food transplant right now. Yeah, that was going to be mean, my follow up. Is the ethical all... lottery who the donor has been? Yeah, so, I like, want half poo. A, yeah, it's like should it? It shouldn't be a matter of. Uh, yeah, w- would you get a you know ch- if a choice between death and poo transplant? Would you get it? It'd be more like, but what if the donor was Hitler? And then you're like, <laughs> oh, okay. Now, now we're now we're we're getting somewhere. Yeah, I no, mean, we've all, I, it's we've all had that donor. moment where we've turned I want, around. Like, I want like Tony Stark on. poo. You know, like I want the I want it's the Avengers. Call. You know, like and like you know, it's, 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 it looks like a turd, but actually on the inside, it's a you know, it's an Iron Man suit with nanotechnology. You know, like. I want the... Apparently, how they how they collect this is like a special toilet you get you go on, which like collects the sample and like prepares it all nicely for you know for transplant. Oh, good. Um, so it's not just that they get the person to like you know they they put you under, they cut you open, and then someone just squats over your open <laughs> incision. And just good. I'm glad there's a process and there's a machine. No, to... they got a funnel. It's very yeah, hygienic. Just... Yeah, yeah. So there's some yeah, towels. Honestly. There's some paper <laughs> towels. <laughs> like, so we'll, throw we'll... some towels around it. She'll be right. Yeah, yeah. She'll be perfect. <laughs> anyway, baby wipes. But if you've ever look, basically, what I'm saying is, if you've ever turned around and you looked at the toilet and gone, "That's fucking impressive," then then maybe you could be a unicorn. Maybe this is for you. Maybe uh, you could earn you... some cash. I get the impression Adam feels as though he has unicorn shit. It's like, have you ever been impressed? I mean, by a I have of yours? been impressed. Yeah. Yeah, George tweeted about one of his ones, so I mean, I'm sure. Oh, you're never going to let me forget. You tweet one poo, and then all of a sudden it's a part of your character. I mean, yeah, I don't know what else you expected. There are some things you can't come back from, George. I It was one time, and it's gone now. So I there's no evidence think. of it. So the, it only never. lives in your memory. <laughs> never gone. <laughs> Nothing on the internet ever dies. I think I was impressed at, like, how much food I'd eaten or something like that and how, like attractive of a of a poo how do you remember that do you have that stored away do you got that filed away in the chamber ready to go in case have we I, ever mentioned something about it. poo and then you can humiliate me in front of our large global audience yeah. like yeah, exactly I'll, I'll for this situation that, that's the kind of thing you don't forget george <laughs> On that note, we have been, we are, and we always will be our natural selection. Make sure you visit us at our salubrious home on the poop on the web, unnaturalshow.com. Um, make sure you visit us uh, on all the bullshit social medias that have, do, or ever will exist at Unnatural Show. That's Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and motherfucking TikTok. Make sure you follow me on Instagram and Twitter at George Tipus. That was terrible. Very good. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Tom D. Heath. 
You can follow me on Instagram at AC Doreen. And you can uh, follow us all down to uh, the guillotines where we will be uh, sharpening them with whetstones uh, ready to uh, overthrow the bourgeoisie. Thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> Love your faces. We'll see you next week. Is that how you, you sharpen a guillotine with a, with a wet stone? Is that what, Let's what find out together. I hope that's how you sharpen most things. I'm glad we're all getting on board with the with the guillotine. Well, like, just to clear, we don't advocate for any violence. No, no violence, please. No, we don't. Right. Of course not. I might, I might be a little bit. No, <laughs> no violence. <laughs> like I would I'd like to issue a legal disclaimer that this uh, uh, podcast does not support political violence in the form of guillotines. It's needless to say. Thanks for listening, Anything guys. Else, fair game. Yeah. <laughs> and <laughs> Fine. Anything else, go for it. Razor blades, yeah. go for it. No, yeah. obviously, no political violence of any form or violence of any form or politics of any form. This is all just jokes. This is all, none of this is supposed to be taken seriously. Please don't fire me. Love your faces. Thank you very much for listening. We'll see you next week.